In last lecture we have discussed the definition and example of our homomorphism and our isomorphism. Now we this in this lecture we are going to uh, introduce kernel and image of our homomorphism. So first of all let us see the definition of kernel and image. So if we consider f from R F is an R homomorphism from an R module M to an R module N. Then, what is the definition of kernel of R homomorphism F? The set K is equal to set of all X belongs to M such that F of X is equal to 0. This set is called the kernel of R homomorphism F and it is denoted by kernel of f that means the set of all element of m such that when we imply uh, apply the function on this element we get the answer zero so set of all such element is called the kernel of r homomorphism f now now this is the definition of kernel now the again the definition of image of r homomorphism so the image of R homomorphism means it is simply the image of a particular function. Okay. So here f of uh, the set f of m is equal to set of all f of x where x belongs to m is called the homomorphic image or we can say simply image of m under f or it is denoted by i m of f. No, uh, if we consider any function f from a set a to b then f of a is called the image of a function similarly here f of m is the image of r homomorphism so this is a definition of kernel and image of r homomorphism now we see uh, some important uh, theorem about the kernel and image of r homomorphism First is the kernel of F is an R submodule of M. Okay. So our aim is to prove kernel of F is an R submodule of M. Now to prove R submodule, we first we prove that kernel of F is non-empty subset of M, and then we uh, then we uh, satisfy two condition to prove for the R submodule. So solution. Here f is an R homomorphism from an R module n to R module n. Okay. Now the definition of kernel of f is set of all x belongs to M, where f of x is equal to zero. This is simple. Okay. Now our claim is kernel of f is an R submodule of M. Okay. Now first we saw that kernel of f is non-empty subset of M. So, it is from the definition of kernel, it is clear that kernel of F is subset of M because here all element are from M. So, kernel of F is subset of M. Now, we saw that kernel of F is non-empty. So, let us consider 0 belongs to M. Here, I have, I have written M because of it is 0 of R module M and here I have written N because it is 0 of R module N. Uh, it is just for the understanding, okay? Not required. So, here we have considered 0 from the R module M. Now, we apply R homomorphism F on 0. We get the answer 0. So, we get the 0 into kernel of F, okay? This implies we get the one element in kernel. So, kernel of F is non-empty. Hence, kernel of F is non-empty subset of M. Now, we prove the two condition. First is, let us consider AB belongs to kernel of F. And then after we saw that A minus B also belongs to kernel of F. For that, here we have considered two element A and B belongs to kernel of F. Now, A and B belongs to kernel of F. So, by the definition, f of a is equal to 0 and f of b is equal to 0. This implies that f of a minus f of b is also equal to 0. 
This implies that f of a minus b is also equal to zero because f is an R homomorphism. Okay. So now f of a minus b is equal to zero. Again, apply the definition of kernel. We get the a minus b belongs to kernel of f. So for all a b belongs to kernel of f, a minus b also belongs to kernel of f. First condition is satisfied to be a R submodule. Now again, second condition is we prove that for a belongs to kernel of f, an arbitrary element R belongs to ring R. R a also belongs to kernel of f. For that, let us consider a belongs to kernel of f. Then by the again definition f of a is equal to 0 and r belongs to r. Now f of r, our aim is to prove r a belongs to kernel of f. So we saw that f of r a is equal to 0. Then again then by definition r a belongs to kernel of f. So here we have considered f of r a is equal to r f of a. This is because of f is r homomorphism. Okay f of r a is equal to r f of a. Now f of a is equal to 0. So f of r a is equal to r dot 0. We get the answer 0. So here we get f of r a is equal to 0. This means that r a belongs to kernel of f. So this proves that kernel of f is an r submodule of f. Okay, so here how we can proceed? First, we saw that kernel of F is non-empty subset of M. Then we satisfy two conditions to be a R submodule. So this is the done. This is done. Okay. Now our second theorem is image of F is an R submodule of N. Kernel of F is R submodule of M. Okay, this is R submodule. We can say R submodule of domain, and image is R submodule of codomain. This is N. So proof is as similar as in the kernel of F. First, we saw that image of F is non-empty subset of N. Then, after we satisfied two condition to be R, to be a R submodule of N. So here. Let us consider F is an R submodule, uh, sorry, R homomorphism from R module M into an R module N. Now the definition of image of F is set of all X, set of all F of X, where X belongs to M. Now here when we apply function on any element of M, then the image is goes into N. So by the definition of image of F, it is clear that image of f is subset of n okay our codon so image of f is subset of n now subset is done now we saw that image of f is non empty for that let us consider 0 belongs to m then f of 0 is equal to 0 so we get this is 0 belongs to n here it is 0 of m it is 0 of n so there we get one element 0 in image of f hence image of f is non empty so image of f is non empty subset of n okay now we proceed to satisfy two condition for that let us consider two element a and b belongs to image of f now a and b belongs to image of f and the definition of image is set of all f of x where x belongs to m. So we get two element x and y belongs to m such that a is equal to f of x and b is equal to f of y. Understand? Here we consider two element a and b belongs to image. So a can be written as f of a can be written equal to f of x and b is equal to f of y for some x and y belongs to m. This is from the definition. We get two element x and y. Now our aim is to prove a minus b is also belongs to image of 
f for that here let us consider a minus b now a is equal to f of x so a is equal to f of x minus b is equal to f of y so a minus b is equal to f of x minus f of y so this can be written as f of x plus f of minus y this is the property of r homomorphism so this can be written as f of x minus y now let us consider x minus y is equal to x this and x minus y belongs x comma y belongs to m so x minus y is equal to x dash also belongs to m so we get a minus b is equal to f of x dash okay so this is the form of uh, in the definition of image so a minus b belongs to image of f clear so first condition is satisfied now our second condition is here we have considered element r from the ring r we have considered arbitrary element r now our aim is to prove that r a belongs to image of f for that let us consider r a now r a but a is equal to f of x so is equal to r a is equal to r f of x now again by the uh, definition of r homomorphism this can be written as f of r x now rx can be considered as ax double dash is equal to rx belongs to m so ra can be written as ra is equal to f of x double dash okay this implies that ra belongs to image of f this is from the definition of image okay so image of f is non empty subset of n also Uh, it satisfied two condition to be a r sub module of n hence image of f is an r sub module of n now our next theorem is kernel of f is singleton zero if and only if f is 1 1 or we can say that kernel of f is singleton zero if and only if r homomorphism f is an r isomorphism okay because f is r homomorphism and f is 1 1 then we can say that f is an r isomorphism for for that first assume that kernel of f is equal to singleton 0 now our aim is to prove that f is 1 or or f is an r isomorphism so if possible assume that f is not 1 1 now if f is not 1 1 then there exist two element a and b belongs to m such that a does not equal to b okay and f of a is equal to f of b this means the image of this two element are same but this two element are not same this is the when uh, from the definition of 1 1 what is the 1 1 function if two element are different then their images are also different but here it is two elements are different but their images are same okay so we get now here we have assumed that f is not 1 1 so there exist two element a and b such that a and b both are different but their images f of a is equal to f of b are same now here f of a is equal to f of b so we, this implies that f of a minus f of b is equal to 0 from the definition of r homomorphism we can write f of a minus b is equal to 0 this implies that a minus b belongs to kernel of f from the definition of kernel of f so a minus b belongs to kernel of f but kernel of f is equal to 0 so a minus b is equal to 0 so a is equal to b but this is contradiction with our assumption because here we have assumed that a does not equal to b and f of b a and is equal to f of b but here we have uh, here we got a is equal to b so this is the contradiction with Uh, contradiction with our assumption hence our assumption is wrong 
so f is not one one is wrong so f is one so if part is completed now our converse part is now conversely we assume that f is one one and then we saw that kernel of f is singleton zero now here f is one one now our uh, we want to prove that kernel of f is singleton zero for that let us consider any element a belongs to kernel of f now element is from kernel of f so f of a is equal to zero this is by the definition so f of a is equal to zero now zero can be written as f of zero so in our second step we get f of a is equal to f of zero now f is one one so by the definition of one one if images are same then both element must be same so here f of a is equal to f of zero so a must be equal to zero because f is one one so a belongs to f a belongs to kernel of f is arbitrary element so all the element from the kernel of f must be equal to zero so kernel of f equal to singleton zero hence the proof so this is the in this lecture we discuss definition of kernel and image of r homomorphism and some important result or we can say some important theorem now in the next lecture we have discuss uh, we will discuss some congruent modulo and and define quotient modulo okay Thank you.